Hello friends, I'm Lyric Montgomery Kennard, and during this crazy time with the COVID-19 pandemic, I thought I'd try a little something to brighten your day. I'll be talking to other artists and we'll show you a little bit of what we're working on or how we're coping, and maybe we'll be able to give you a few ideas so that you can build solidarity and community with the people around you. So I'll go ahead and start. Hi friends, I'm Lyric Kennard and I'm here with Pepper Corey. Pepper, why don't you introduce yourself? I am uh, Pepper Corey. I'm uh, in Beaufort, North Carolina. So I'm on the coast from where Lyric lives. And um, the building that I'm in, it, I call it the shed. It's the area where I work on my quilts and my writing and stuff. I've been doing this, gosh, a while, a while. I started when I was in college. Uh, I graduated college in 1973, so it has been a while. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're one of our more experienced quilters. Okay. Yeah, great. And you've been teaching and doing this for a long time. I know. Um, I don't remember when the first time I met you was. And I think you might have come and lectured to Capital Quilt Guild in Raleigh at some point when I was first starting quilting. But I've always loved your work and I've always just enjoyed your personality and your spirit. You're one of those people that make me smile. So we're in this crazy time with so many people in lockdown and where there's this um, pandemic going around. So why don't you give me just a quick short how are you doing? What are you doing? Do you have coping mechanisms? Are you okay? Um, like everybody else, I have good days and bad days. Um, I'm very lucky in that I have a place to go to. And for me, it's the quilt shed. And you have a studio in your uh, house. I, I do think that that's a way to put yourself in time out when you need to, you know. And because I'm a quilter and a needle worker, I always have many things on the go. Uh, so, you know, when this first started to lock down, I thought, oh, that's great. You know, I'll just get tons done. And the fact of it, of it is, is uh, I, I vary, I vacillate. Uh, I'm on the internet, I'm looking for news of what's happening with the virus thing. And, and then I'm back to uh, my quilting concerns. And sometimes I have a hard time concentrating. Uh, last night, I was binding a little quilt. And I have no idea how I did it, but I cut the binding off at the corners with a pair of scissors, <laughs> not one, but two corners wrong. So I have to take off half of the binding for this quilt and, and, re and redo it. And that's what happens when you work at something that requires close attention, but you're doing it with uh, half a brain. So that's been one of the effects of working like this. It, I realized that all of us, even if we're um, looking like we're in control and we know what's happening, all of us are under stress, and we do we we deal with it in in different ways. Right. You know, in my family, we have a history behind this, and uh, my grandfather died in the influenza epidemic in 1918, and. Uh, uh, he died when my dad was less than one years old. Mm. And so in my family, as soon as there was a virus for the flu, we all got lined up and got it. And it was miserable, those first shots. You had to take one a week for a month. Ooh. And they raised a lump on your arm. They were awful. But my father was determined <laughs> that he wouldn't lose a child to the flu. Right. So uh, I'm taking social distancing seriously. Good for you. Oh, I really am. Um, my husband and I keep ourselves uh, busy. He's retired, but he's always on the go. Um, I don't know what he's working on right now. I say that he's uh, making sawdust because I don't know what he's working on in his sheds. He has smaller sheds that are connected by a breezeway. And when I look out the west window of my studio, uh, I look right out on the yard and I can see you know what he's doing out in the yard so we're very good at being alone together so uh so you've got that social distancing thing down i i, but, I think so but i do check in with friends 
Good. And I have made a, a, a habit of checking in with people from the quilt industry who were mm -hmm. what I would call business friends. Right. That I would see probably twice um, a year mm -hmm. at the at the wholesale markets. And uh, maybe they didn't expect to hear from me, but I just wanted to reach out and, and see how they were doing. And I did find out that a friend in New York is really facing food shortages. Oh. You know, and if she didn't have a teenage son who lived with her and regarded uh, finding food in grocery stores as kind of a hunting and gathering experience, she would be in a bad way. We're very lucky here where we live yeah. that, I mean, there can be shortages, but gosh, you know, we have most everything we need at this time. Good, good. Do you have anything you're working on? That you oh, share? yeah. I started it in January and um, I had a feeling it was going to be a big quilt so right now i envision it as six feet but it could grow to 84 easily and it's the quilt that's on the board behind me oh that's beautiful and uh it's called the drunkard escapes <laughs> and uh it just starts with a traditional drunkard's path quilt in the middle and i've been working all in solids so it was really fun to work in print and uh, that is a six inch size unit and wow. six inches is fairly large mm -hmm. so the the templates look like that mm -hmm. i have i, I have, have a <laughs> yeah yeah and uh i, I don't I'm, i i am not uh i don't have the kind of mind that can grasp things on the computer as well uh now i'm literate i can write but I can't do graphics. So the drunkard escapes. This is what I'm working from. Nice. So I don't have to have things figured out. The fabric tells you. Yeah. And um, that's as so far as it's going. I'm, I'm working. So you plan a little bit, but then no. you're willing to improvise as you go. Oh, I find that I can only plan so much. And then I get really itchy, like, I've got to get into the fabric. <laughs> I've got to put it up. And it's got to start. And this quilt, even though it's an average patchwork quilt, uh, it's not assembled in rows. Mm -hmm. it, I made that block in the center, and then it has to be. Then you go around. Yeah, around and around. And it does give me the opportunity to check myself at all the corners to make sure that the pink is working out properly, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, when you get to the squares, those are six inch squares, of course, cut. Um, six and a half. Um, the next round is going to be gray. So the pink is going to pass over a gray thing. And then the next round will be black. Oh, and that'll be a really interesting value contrast. It will be a value contrast, and the pink will keep going at the corners. You know, nice. I have decided beyond that. At that point, it will be six feet square. <laughs> And you'll wait and see if it's done or not done or if it just keeps going. Just keeps going. I'm not sure. Uh, I think sometimes we set a limit on what we can do. Mm. And, um, and, and we also say, well, I'm only going to work with this pile of fabric. Well, that's all right if that's all the fabric that you've got in the world. But um, <laughs> what you know, I have a little bit of fabric. Okay. <laughs> I got a little bit of fabric. <laughs> the whole shelves on the back wall, that's all fabric? Yeah. Nice. There's, there's bins, and the bins have cut pieces. Uh-huh. And on the top in your drawers. The bolts. Oh, the drawers. Now, I bought those from an architect who was moving to Raleigh. Yeah. And they are nice flat drawers. They are actually made for Blueprint. old-fashioned blueprints. Yeah. Right. And what they have in them is ephemera uh one of my side interests is collecting things about quilt history yeah sometimes you stumble on stuff and you don't know exactly if it will be important or not um i'm going to get up for just a moment sure and uh see i'm not exactly sure how this camera i i hope that we can keep things we'll just keep going okay the drawers um Ephemera is the little stuff. 
the all stuff. The, all the bits and bobs. The bits and bobs, the things that are often overlooked, but they can be really, really interesting. I have my own ephemera too. <laughs> uh, I've worked out, you know, whole cloth quilts, mm -hmm. several of them. Will they ever be made into stencils? I doubt that anyone would want to do them, but they're here. They're here. I have a complete obsession with furniture that has a ton of little drawers in it. <laughs> yeah. Always. Yeah, always have. Library cabinet when they have the old card files yeah i would just spend hours just at the cabinet who cares about the actual books i just liked opening all the drawers you know copies of things from um, the illinois women's prairie farmers household department 1930. Oh, bring that up bring that up towards the camera a little bit and hold it for us oh that's fascinating it is. I've got stuff that dates back into the 1800s. Um, Have a seat. Yeah. So what's been the hardest thing about being on lockdown for you? Oh, the hardest thing has nothing to do with quilting. Okay. The hardest thing is that I was supposed to have an operation to replace my left hip. Mm. on April 21st and that has been put off indefinitely and you know thousands and thousands of other people are in exactly the same position uh, as that so I've actually found uh, the more limited routine and the quilt thing and checking in with friends I've been pretty good about that happy about that um, because the not being able to walk as quickly and I'm used to charging into things. And uh, when I can't, cause I'm often walking with a cane now, it irritates the heck out of me. <laughs> so, so you like me are not the most patient patient. No. And it, when it comes to myself, especially when it comes to other people, like if I'm in a situation with students I'm teaching, I find it very relaxing and soothing to actually be very patient. Yeah, me too. But when your body won't do what you want it to do, it's just like, oh. <laughs> yeah, so um, I think um, see, it, it's not the, the quilting that's been difficult. It's just knowing that instead of three weeks from now having an operation, it may be three months. Mm -hmm. It might not happen until, you know, August or September. and. Uh, having had the operation on my other hip uh, five years ago, I know how long it takes to come back and do physical therapy and get into the swing of things, you know. So 2020 is shot. <laughs> I need to think ahead to 2021. So um, that's probably been the hardest thing. Right, right. What's been, um, what message of hope or encouragement can you give to the people who will watch this? Okay. Well, it's lovely that they can watch you on the internet and watch other quilters. Uh, it's aligned to sanity. It really is. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's a lot of other things on the internet that aren't aligned to sanity. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have started to self limit. Uh, my own interaction on the computer because i find the crazies are out there you know they're not sleeping they're they're on um facebook or instagram whatever uh, platform they choose to communicate on or just plain email and um they often don't have something like we have in our needlework lives to absorb us and to focus us you know and uh if i listen to that kind of crazy stuff you know, it, it, it degrades my ability to focus. Yeah, and we kind of are what we eat, right, mentally. Uh, so let's curate and feed ourselves um, good mental health things. Absolutely. You know, I, there were a lot of cute things going around about, um, oh, and now I'll drink wine and quilt all day long. Um, you should drink water and quilt all day long. <laughs> there you uh, go. When you're under stress, you, I don't know what it is about your body, but it shuts down a little bit and you need to 
drank more water than you have ever in the past. I can tell days when I don't drink enough water. Uh, yeah. It's as if my brain closes down a little. So, you know, you got to have a routine. Be good to yourself, you know, and check in with people, especially if you feel like you don't want to, because that's a real sign that you're getting ready to go snail, you know, curl up, in a, curl up in a ball. Um, so when you don't feel like it, you know, look down your list of friends or relatives or neighbors and just reach out. It can be really tiny, just a little phone call, not long. A phone call, a text, just anything. Um, I have found that exact same thing too. And the thing that you find is no matter how bad you're feeling, you got to know that somebody else out there is feeling worse and that you can do something to lift them. And as you lift other people, you know, a rising tide lifts all the boats. As you lift somebody else, it, it lifts you as well. You're, yeah, you're right. You're right. Uh, it's the best kind of charity, if you want to. And, and uh, what we always know is that uh, we might think on one level, oh, I'm doing this because poor Mrs. So-and-so doesn't have any, you know, close neighbors or, or friends. No, no, no. You're doing it for yourself. <laughs> and that's okay. <laughs> it's okay. So to do it that way. <laughs> it's okay. Good. So, um, I did realize that what's showing right here is a <laughs> very, very tiny quilt. Yeah? It's a little, little, little drunkard's path, and it's made of one-inch pieces. <laughs> one-inch pieces next to six-inch pieces. <laughs> that was a moment of insanity. Uh, I did. I, I wrote a book on this pattern ages ago, so that was. This is the book I wrote. Oh, nice. And now this is the Dover edition, which is what's available, and the little tiny quilt that's on the board is shown in that. Oh, good, good. Well, but, Pepper, it has been so delightful to talk you. to you, and thank you so much for sharing some of your time and letting us see your lovely studio and the. Theme. Oh, you're yeah. you're seeing a very tiny slice of it. Oh, yes, we know. <laughs> we understand how that goes. <laughs> that part over there, you know, is piled. You turn the camera. You yeah. don't want to give us a little peek. Maybe. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Maybe just yeah. a little. Well, There's the nice that. slide. Yeah. So if you don't, I found out if you don't put a ceiling on your work shed, it's considered a shop and taxed at less. <laughs> <laughs> that is never going to get a ceiling in it. Okay. Okay. Uh, where I sew? Where you sew? Where I sew? Whoa. You can't. Can you see my featherweight? Can you see my little machine? Her name. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Jessica, right there. Oh, sweet. And um, oh, yeah, yeah. That's where all lots and lots of things over there. We really do. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks for showing us. Thanks <laughs> again, Pepper. And you okay. stay safe, stay healthy, um, and stay in touch with the people you love. Okay. Thank you very much, Larry. And. Uh, you guys, isn't it wonderful that we have this way to communicate now? It is. I'm I very think grateful people who've been through other sicknesses and didn't have this. And uh, we should be grateful for this. We are. We are. Grateful to you, Larry. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. -bye. Bye.